Hey everybody, this is Daryl. Uh, hope you're all hearing me, looking at the screen. Uh, somebody chime in on the chat if, uh, if you can hear me and everything looks cool. Uh, we can get started. All right, um, welcome to Full Sail. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm gonna be your teacher this year or this, this month. Uh, uh, I hope, hope your year wasn't a Freudian slip. Uh, time seems to have gone crazy th this year and uh, every day seems like an eternity. But uh, um, believe me, a, a four-week class goes by very quickly. So I'm here to orient you. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is just get everybody set, uh, kind of like get everyone settled in. I know you guys are kind of anxious. You sign up for the school. You're told it's great. You've never done online or you've done online other places that are substandard, in my opinion. So you really don't know what to expect here. So... I really want to just kind of take the edge off. I, I know a lot of guys have some stress and anxiousness. Uh, this is going to be a great experience. And we're going to do our best to uh, shape it around you. Uh, and, and sort of you having to conform to us, you're going to be able to set up your own, your own uh, work study patterns and habits and such. Now that could be a trap for online students because if you're not used to it, you don't have self-discipline. If your life is crazy, it's really hard to protect your study period. You know, everything else can always impinge. Uh, and so we're gonna help you, you know, get, get those good habits started as well. So this first class, create a presentation. It's, it's here for a purpose. I'm gonna talk about that today. But we're also gonna just sort of help you get used to the whole uh, full sale system. Uh, believe me, a new class every month is an enormously uh, consuming engine. And if you don't have that rhythm in your blood, if you're not ready for it, it, it can be very tough. So we're here to sort of start that habit, get you guys used to being on a full sale, get you used to the system. It's really uh, very nice. Uh, I've looked at a lot of other on, uh, online school systems and, and um, you know, they, they just rely too much on translating old means into news, uh, uh, into to, to, to being online. And, and we're very much um, uh, using new technology in new and, and, and uh, credible ways that make sense. So I think you're gonna like this experience. Uh, it's, it's not completely devoid of the old things. We, we have some readings. I'm gonna talk about the reading that we're gonna do. And I'm gonna talk about the assignments that we have due this week. So I wanna clear all the mystery away. So these live sessions, I'm gonna, they're gonna be about an hour, two hours long each. Uh, and, and I tend to hold mine on Mondays. Uh, each section holds theirs a different time of the week whenever it feels convenient. And because I scheduled them, I can't know your schedule. You know, I, I may be scheduling this for exactly the wrong time for you. And to that end, that's why it's not absolutely necessary that you attend live. We recommend that you want attend live. We hope you attend live. You get more out of it. You get to ask questions and, and, and participate. Um, but if you can't be here live, we're recording this right now. And that recording is gonna be placed back in the same place where you registered for this uh, uh, live session. And so each week um, you either attend live and uh, get the information or you come back after the live sessions happened on Monday nights and you watch the video and the video is gonna be up all week. So you'll have all week to come back and check this. And uh, the fact that we recorded is, is also very useful for you guys here because maybe you're anxious and you're feeling like you should be taking notes. Well, you can take notes if you like, but uh, really because I'm recording it, you don't have to take notes. If you wanna review anything that we say, you're gonna have access to the video as well. So you can come back during the week and come back and, and, and go through the instructions or some explanation that uh, you wanna access uh, in, in just in time fashion. Uh, I know I'm gonna talk about stuff you haven't done yet. So maybe I'm going into a lot of great detail, but you won't remember it. You have the ability to come back and watch the video over again. So uh, that's what we're doing there. Uh, the, uh, this unusual usual year makes going to school online uh, for you guys a kind of head of the curve thing. You guys get to, uh, you know, be free of the situation. We're getting back on campus here at Full Sail and 
we have all kinds of new rules and, and uh, uh, structures that, that are changing the way we live. And I know that we've all been dealing with this all summer, uh, you know, wearing masks out in public. So here online, you don't have to wear masks if you don't want. But then again, the joy of uh, being an online student is nobody's looking at you. So if wearing masks is your thing, man, have at it. You get to be free. So uh, as long as you're participating with us, we want you to be uh, working the way that, that you want to work that, that, that makes you happy and comfortable. So uh, the system we're using here, and, and everybody seems to have gotten familiar with it at the same time this year because of the, the virus uh, epidemic that's happening, is Zoom. Uh, we've been using other business conference software to help connect live with our students for a long time. And they all have you know, various levels of reliability. Um, one of the things I have to, to warn you at, at the beginning here is that uh, because of the, the fragility of these kinds of systems, we are all at the mercy of the internet gods. And uh, I'm not running the server. The server is somewhere in California right now. And there are fire, fire, fires in, in the hills of California. So um, the server may be under attack, we never know. And if not, I may be under attack, or you may be. Uh, you may have crazy weather. I have crazy weather. Uh, Florida here is now in the, in the midst of its hurricane season. Uh, I have rain going on right now, but it's not real bad rain. And, and fortunately, there's not the kind with uh, a ton of lightning. We have uh, Orlando seems to be the lightning capital of the world. And because of that, uh, my power can go down often. And we need to know what to do in case something goes offline. If you go offline, you can go back to the link that you logged in on and uh, get back in. It's kind of like a reboot and uh, you only miss uh, a few minutes. If I go offline, sometimes it's hard to know. Maybe you're just not hearing me or I'm, suddenly, you know, my, my screen goes blank or something. Uh, that can happen to me. I've discovered that it takes me about two or three minutes to reboot my system and get back online. So if suddenly I'm gone, don't leave immediately, wait maybe four or five minutes. If I don't return by then, then assume that the internet gods got me. But uh, I have the ability to come back and re-log in and, and keep going. So um, hopefully that won't happen to us, but I'm not saying it won't because we prepare for it. So uh, Zoom is a cool system. It allows us to be connected by video. I'm not really using my video. I have mine turned on right now. So if you wanna see me, you can. Uh, I'm not really pushing the video out. You're looking at my desktop. So uh, that's the way these classes are gonna go. You're gonna hear my voice and I'm gonna show you my computer. And you'll be looking at some slides at the beginning as we're talking through. And then I'll dump out of the, the slides and go straight to my browser and we'll go live into Full Sail uh, FSO and I'll talk you through the assignments. So you'll see me doing things uh, in real time. Hopefully that will explain a lot of stuff that we wanna do. Uh, we do have the ability to uh, talk back and forth. Hopefully if your system has a, a microphone or a computer or a, 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 a camera, uh, then, then you can participate and we can, uh, I have the ability to turn the mic on and off. So at my end, I have them all turned off right now so that we're getting a good clean recording. I'm recording this right now. And even though I know most of you would have ambient audio, one or two of you are gonna have a dog barking or have Halo playing in the back. And so uh, it's, it's good for me to control the audio. But if anybody wants to talk, all you have to do is let me know that you want my attention. There's little widgets here. And we can also uh, talk in the chat box. Uh, most of you have the chat box open. If you don't, you can go to your configuration and open it up. Uh, I wanted to use the chat box right now just to see where everybody's from. We've got a pretty good uh, assortment of folks here. So I want you to go down there and just type where you're at right now and we'll see what part of the countries are being represented uh, tonight's class. I see Homestead, Florida, Minnesota, Miami, Tampa, Chicago, Tyler, Texas, Atlanta, Jacksonville, California, Washington, Atlanta, Miami, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Bloomfield, Wisconsin, uh, Memphis, Manhattan, El Paso. So a pretty good assortment of the, of the country. Uh, a lot of Florida, that's nice. Uh, we have a student here from Costa Rica. 
Uh, I hope your internet stays in good fashion as well. So um, we have a good assortment of people all across the country. Um, and uh, that's uh, an interesting way to, to keep class. You, not, you aren't necessarily seeing each other, but you have the ability to interact with each other. Uh, you can interact today on a little chat box with each other. And we have the discussion board online and we're gonna talk about you know, uh, getting to know your cohorts. And I'd like to get to know folks right now. So first thing I wanna do is introduce myself. Uh, I've, I've posted a video uh, you know, about where I came from and what I've been doing. I'm a film guy and I uh, came to uh, Full Sail about 14 or 15 years ago and was teaching digital video. Uh, and so I, I've been teaching editing and, and filmmaking and so forth. And about four or five years ago, I switched to this first class here, uh, which while the tech is not quite so sophisticated, you know, presentation tools instead of uh, video editing, it's kind of the same thing. It's storytelling. It's learning how to express yourself and get people uh, known, get your point of view known. And I get really energized by meeting all the new students and, and being around. So um, uh, I'm somebody that uh, has been around quite a while. I'm kind of an old guy. I'm an actual gray beard, you can see. And I've been using computers since about 1984. So I, I know them pretty well and I can answer an awful lot of questions. So I may not be hip. Uh, all my uh, musical and movie tastes are all grounded in the previous century, but um, I, I do know everything that's going on and I know how to uh, uh, work with most of the gear that you guys are working with. So I can talk you through most problems. Now I'm not here really to be your technical support. We've got an entire department of technical support, but uh, I, I want you to be able to understand all the lessons. And the way we work here at Full Sail is the lessons aren't really cookie cutter. They aren't like a, a prescribed recipe that you just do step one, step two, and you don't even have to think about it. Uh, Full Sail, we employ what we call problem-based learning, which means you do thing, you learn things by doing them. And so often you'll end up with uh, vague instructions because you have to figure out what it is you want to work on personally. And that means that my job is not to tell you how to do it, but to give you options, to, to be a kind of a coach, to say you could use this or you could use that, you could try this approach, you could try this software, etc. And so I'm available and that means that um, as you're figuring out your own path, I want you to be asking me questions. And to that end, I make myself as available as I can be. Uh, you have my email. You have the ability to access, access me through the FSO system and messaging. And I like to give out my personal cell phone number so you can call me if you wish, but more importantly, you can text me anytime you want. I've got my phone with me at all times. So if you're asking a quick question and you just really want to, you know, uh, an answer that, that'll send you right back to work and keep going without dropping a beat, then uh, feel free to text me. You're never going to bother me by texting me. Uh, the worst that can happen is I'll ignore you. Um, but you can text me at any time. I have published office hours, but you can kind of throw them out the window. You can try to get a hold of me whenever you like. And if I don't respond, then, you know, uh, that's your answer. But for the most part, you can get me early in the morning, you can get me late at night, you can get me a little day. Um, I'm available and I love to answer your questions so you're never bothering me. So uh, that's what I'm here for. And uh, don't feel like you're imposing upon me to ask questions because that's really what I wanna be doing. I, I wanna explain things as well as I can today, but I realize that giving you information before you can use it oftentimes is, is uh, counterproductive. So it's only when you get to that point where you're actually doing something in particular that uh, a question becomes really pressing and then uh, the sooner you can get an answer, the better. So I understand that process and I wanna be there for you. Uh, so that's who I am. I'm some guy that's been around in the film industry an awful long time, written some books, I've had lots of, uh, uh, run, run my own company and had lots of different uh, jobs at different film places. Never really worked in Hollywood. I worked in Chicago for 30 years and I was in the ad industry and I worked in uh, uh, um, commercial work 
uh, with a lot of really great industries in uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, uh, education and, and you know a tele, uh, uh, telephonics and so forth. Um, but I've been teaching here for the last uh, 15 years or so, and, and uh, um, I really love teaching, and I, I, that's about as much as you need to know about me. So let's find out about you guys. Uh, there's an awful lot of you here, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to call on all of you, but I'm going to call on uh, people at random and uh, going to allow you a chance to introduce yourselves. So I'm going to give you 15 seconds to answer four questions. Now, this is not a pop quiz. I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not trying to trick anybody. So here are the four questions. I want you to tell me your name, tell me where you're from, because there are people here from all over the United States and even outside the United States. Tell me what you're here to study because this class includes all the different disciplines. Uh, you guys won't be in your individual classes for another three or four months. In the first three or four months, you're taking the general requirements classes, which means that you're mixed in with different uh, degree programs. Uh, and this is a great chance to network and meet other classmates because oftentimes later on down the road, you're never gonna be in the same class with somebody if you're not studying the same degree program. But it is a huge part of going to Full Sail that you're able to network and make friends with people in other disciplines. Uh, if you're a creative writer, then you wanna know someone who's gonna be a producer. If you're an audio producer, and you want to know somebody who works in video because you might want to score video. So you guys are all studying and acquiring particular talents that someone else is going to need. And right now is a great chance to meet the guy that you're going to, um, you know, give your next job to or get your next job from in the future. Uh, full sale students really network with each other really well. They understand that process. And the only way to get that happening in an online atmosphere is to get to know your classmates. So uh, you want to use this month to kind of figure out who are the, the folks that you're real simpatical with. Uh, you're going to talk to each other in the discussion boards. Uh, I've set up a, uh, um, a Discord channel. It's not really uh, anything important, but if you're a video gamer and you're online anyway, then that's a chance for you guys to just to talk to each other and be in the same group and kind of get to know each other as well. So we want to make those opportunities happen so you can network. Uh, back to this. I know I, I, I get off uh, subject sometimes, but back to your four questions. Uh, you're going to tell us what you're here studying. And then finally, I want you to give me two words that describe your professional vision. So it's kind of like a, uh, a word war shock. Just explain who you are by giving us two words that have a meaning. So uh, let me try this. I'm going to call on Annika Willis. Hi. So my name is Annika Willis. Um, I'm from Tyler, Texas. I'm studying uh, computer animation. And the two words I would use to describe my professional vision would be fun and classic, I guess. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's try Dylan Nagel. Hello, my name is Dylan Nagel. I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. I am studying game design, and my two words are game developer. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Um, Evan Zolodek. Hi, my name is uh, Evan Volodek. Uh I'm from New Jersey. Uh, I am studying game art. And um, two words would be hardworking and kind. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel Acuna Garnier. And tell me how bad I messed that up. Uh, you didn't mess it up that badly. Hey, my name is Gabriel. I'm from Costa Rica. I'm studying digital cinematography. And the two words that I would use would be honesty and creativity. Okay. Now I'm guaranteed to mess up the next one. Haley Prespoliski. <laughs> um, my name is Haley Prespoliski. Um, I'm from Bloomfield. Don't tell me I got it right. 
everyone messes it up, don't worry. <laughs> um, two, or I'm studying digital arts and design, and two words to describe me are hardworking and creative. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Manuel Leon. Hola. Uh, my name is Manuel Leon. I am from Jacksonville, Florida. I am studying game design. And two words I'll describe my professional vision. Yeah. Two words I will describe my professional vision is well made because I want to make a very good game. Excellent so, game. Uh, Ila Bolalin. Are you there? Okay, I can hear you barely. Go ahead. Are you done, Ella? I might have been a bad microphone there. Let's see if more luck. I have more luck. Uh, Derek Barcus. Oh, he doesn't seem to have a microphone. Sheldon Leonard. Hello, I'm Sheldon Leonard. Uh, I'm from New York. I'm going to be studying computer animation. And two words to describe my professional vision is moving forward. Moving forward. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Katie Zanuga. Um, hi, my name is Katie Zuniga. Um, I am from Atlanta, Georgia. I am also studying game art. And I would probably describe my professional vision as creative and hardworking. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, choose one more. Um, Jay Marler. That mm, one didn't seem to work. We'll try one more. Uh, Kevin Nethrop. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, hi, my name is Kevin Nethrop. Um, I'm from Miami. And two words that describe my professional vision would be some one of. Uh, All right, thank you very much. Um, sorry, we just have too many people here today for me to catch everybody. If you want to introduce yourself and I didn't give you a chance, uh, go ahead and do it now in the discussion, in the chat box. Just uh, again, uh, answer each four questions. What's your name, where you're from, what you're here to study, and add two words if you like. Uh, that'll be a great way to introduce each other as we, as we move on. So what am I expecting from students? Well, I don't expect you to know any of this stuff fully ahead of time. Um, this is a creative presentations class. We're going to talk an awful lot about PowerPoint, uh, but this is not a PowerPoint class. I don't expect you to learn it. I don't expect you to already know it. Um, you might not even use it. Uh, it's not necessary. So what we are here about is to get your ideas, is to get you using and practicing presentations. So we are going to provide you with means and tools to do that. What we expect you to do is to participate. We expect you to step up and give us your ideas. This is a class where we're not really looking for uh, technical polish. We're looking for uh, your expression, your ideas, your ability to um, put yourself forward. And so as long as you participate, we're going to be very happy uh, and we want you to ask questions. That's the only way that we're going to know if you uh, 
uh, understand something or not. You know, it's, this isn't like a classroom uh, environment where I can see a puzzled look on your face. If you need some help, you need to ask for help and don't feel shy about asking for it. Um, you know, you can ask in the chat box, you can ask any number of ways. Um, if, if you need to be talked through some kind of uh, complicated uh, um, software operation, I usually will give you a phone call and we can do that on the phone a little faster than on, we can type. But if they're, you know, uh, short answers, then certainly the, uh, the discussion board or the, the, the chat box or texting works pretty well. But uh, we're going to get you through everything you need to do, but we need you to stay in touch with us and participate. Uh, we know that the hardest thing for a new student is just finding time to be a student, is, is starting to incorporate your student life into your schedule. I know you've had it in your mind, you've all been planning to go to full sale for some time, but now that you're here, um, it's not quite the same as having protected space in your schedule that, that you use every week to be a student. Some of you are you know, working jobs, some of you are working double jobs, some of you are taking care of your kids, some of you are in the army. Your life is hectic and uh, not necessarily in your control. And so being able to carve out a space in your schedule and protect it against uh, all the other demands on your life is a very difficult thing and it's the hardest thing for a new student to do and so we're going to help you with that but one of the things we also know about building habits is it tends to take six to eight weeks to build a real habit and that's longer than this class exists so you're not really going to make it this month things are going to happen you're going to get off schedule and we want you to let us know what's going on with you if weird weather has knocked off your internet if your kid had to go to the, the hospital last night, you, you're missing your deadline, let us know. Uh, we understand that this is the first month and we're gonna practice some forgiveness with deadlines and things. Deadlines are very important here at Full Sail, but we're not uh, unmindful of how hard it is to get started as a new student. So if you keep us in the loop, then we will make sure that work with you and make sure you have every chance to get everything you need done. Now, what should you expect from us? Well, you should expect this to be available. Uh, we're not doing anything else. This is our job. It, I'm supposed to be here for you. So if you're looking for me, uh, uh, if it's not three in the morning, then you know uh, it's reasonable that I should be available. Uh, you should expect timely feedback. Our classes are, are built in such a way, a way that you have new assignments every week. You know They open up at 12.01 on Sunday night Monday morning, or um, and they're available all week before they close. So you have it all week to get something done. Um, and when you finish an assignment, the next week's assignments are built on top of that. So it's important when you turn in your assignment at the end of the week on a Sunday night, that you get your feedback back as soon as possible so that you know how you did so you can move forward. And that's my job, that's grading. And I'm gonna to try to get everybody back their grades on Mondays if I can. Uh, school policy is that everybody, everything that's turned in on a Sunday gets graded by that Friday. Class policy for creative presentation is that everything turned in on a Sunday gets graded by Wednesday. It's my personal uh, goal to try to get it done on a Monday. Can't always happen. Sometimes there are too many students Sometimes life impinges on me as well. But if you should typically expect to get feedback uh, early in the week so that you're not left hanging knowing what to do or how you did on last week's assignment. So, you know, that should be that expectation. Uh, as you guys are going through some of the uh, preface material before week one, uh, I noticed, I know you all probably clicked on something called professionalism and it probably didn't make that much of an impression on you. It was a link to the, the uh, student handbook or something or another. But I want to let you know that professionalism is a big deal at Full Sail. It is 10% of your grade for every class that you take. And it works like this. Uh, our goal is not only to make you proficient in the subject matter that you came here to learn, 
but our goal is to make you a working professional that people admire and want to hire. And we do that by treating you like a working professional. We give you the respect that you're due from day one. We want you all to give each other that same respect. So we expect you to treat your, your classmates as colleagues, to admire them, to give them respect, uh, to treat them in a, uh, a manner in which you're all equal and equally talented. And so by acting like a professional throughout your career here at Full Sail, we end up turning you into the kind of working professional that the world wants to hire. The sort of person who shows up for work on time, gets his stuff done by a deadline, helps colleagues, is always cheerful, uh, is the kind of people that other places want to hire. And professionalism is our way of enforcing that discipline. Now here in week, month one, everybody's excited. It's never usually a problem. Professionalism isn't a big deal at all in this first month because you're too excited to act unprofessionally. You aren't bored yet. But believe me, in a 30 month class, or a 30 month um, cor uh, course, there are going to be months in which you're in a bad mood. You do not want that bad mood to be reflected in your discussion posts or your treatment of other classes, classmates, et cetera. And if the instructor sees that behavior in you, it's going to be reflected in your professionalism grade. As long as you're acting like a good working professional, you'll always get 100% on this, uh, th this aspect of your class grade. But if you act less than professionally, if you miss a deadline, if you're late with your work, if you are rude to people, that's going to show up in your professionalism score. And uh, it's part of the ways that Full Sail helps to make you uh, a really valuable employee by the time you're done. And uh, I don't need to say much more about it, but realize that this is going to be a part of your life and that at this, as, this, as of this moment, accept every one of your classmates as an equal colleague and know that you wanna treat them with respect and demand respect from them as well. Uh, all right, this class is based on two books. Um, so um, classwork or uh, class, classes uh, type, regular education stuff doesn't disappear here at Full Sail. Uh, we're 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 uh, high tech and high and multimedia, but we're still relying on books here. And these are really good books. They're uh, two books written by the same woman, uh, Resonate and Slideology, by a woman named Nancy Duarte. And uh, I'm going to talk about these books in a moment. But the way that you access these books, we have a deal with a third party website called O'Reilly Books, and they're an uh, online library. And they specialize in creative books. They have a library of over 100,000 books that they have access to. And all of them are about the creative arts. So they're books on programming, books on photography, books on music production, filmmaking, uh, graphic design, all of those kinds of things. And so you have a license to that for the length of your school career. And you can check out any book that's there. So you should take advantage of this for um, all the things that you're interested in doing. If you're interested in starting to learn 3D programming now before you actually get into your classes, you're going to find really great books that you can check out and, and have access to. But all the textbooks that you're going to get for all the classes you have here at Full Sail are also administered through this. And so the two textbooks that we're using here are Resonate and Sciology, and they're written by Nancy Duarte. Now, O'Reilly Books uh, is a private website. If you went to them individually, you would sign up for an individual membership and they'd charge your credit card and they, they'd track you as, as a, a regular website member. We have what we call a site license, which means that they access you through based on your school parameters, your school email and your school password. And that should all be set up for you automatically. So when you click on the link to go uh, to the O'Reilly website within FSO, it should be automatic. And if that doesn't happen, you need to let us know because that's a technical problem that our tech support needs to fix. 
And last month we were actually having problems with the O'Reilly site uh, and it made it difficult for people to access their books. Uh, and we don't want that to be in the way of anything. So you'll find that what we've done this month is in addition to giving the you know, link to O'Reilly, we've also listed the books as downloadables. So you can directly download the PDFs for each book and read them offline at your own will and not have to deal with O'Reilly website if, if you don't want to. Uh, and that is a, a terrific backup in case there continue to be problems with O'Reilly. But for the most part, we're very excited about O'Reilly and we just hope they get over whatever has been uh, cursing them the last month or so because we have had issues with them, but we expect those to go away. So uh, back to these books, Nancy Duarte is an art director. And uh, like all creative people in the, the 90s and the 2000s and so forth, she would go to all these creative meetings. And every time there was a meeting, even though everyone in the meeting was another art director or you know uh, an artist or an illustrator or somebody with a really in incredible talent, every business meeting she ever went to was run by PowerPoint. And people would open up PowerPoint and it would always be the same. The PowerPoints are all text. The text on the screens are exactly what the person says. So the person reading the meeting isn't looking at the people in the meeting. They're looking at the screen and they're just reading the screen off to us as if you weren't there, as if you were a five-year-old having to be read your, your story time book. And there's nothing interesting about the slides because they're all text. And, and you're wondering why you're in this meeting with PowerPoint in the first place. So Nancy Duarte kept finding herself in these meetings. She, she understood that if you go to a meeting at a, you know, a granite supply place, yeah, there, there's nobody there artistic. They're not going to run a really creative PowerPoint meeting. But if you go to a meeting full of creative art people, why aren't the presentations any better? And it's just because people use PowerPoint wrong. And so Nancy decided that she would help the world. And she wrote the book called Slideology, which is all about designing slides that are really effective. And it was a huge hit. But she realized that she hadn't told the whole story. That while Slideology was a huge hit, it actually was just an art book that deals with creating slides. And that the big problem with most people's creative production presentations is that they start making the slides too early. That they miss all the stuff that you should do before you ever get to the slides. So she wrote her second book, Resonate, to tell the whole rest of the story. This is the process of making a creative presentation. And this is why we feel this book's incredibly valuable to you. We feel like you're probably making boring presentations if you're using PowerPoint, just like everybody else does. And it all stems from the same reason. And uh, here's the reason. PowerPoint is not meant to create presentations. It's meant to create slides. And if you don't understand the distinction between that, then you're trapped as well. It means that PowerPoint is something that you open up at the end, after you've finished every other part of the presentation. The slides are the very last thing that you should be doing. And so PowerPoint itself is really great software. You're gonna find all month long that we beat PowerPoint like a dog and we pet it on the head like a dog. It's great software. It's used in terrible ways. It creates terrible presentations. Uh, but that's not really its own fault. Uh, it's the fact that people misinterpret what it's for. So realize that PowerPoint software is only for making slides and that it cannot create the presentation for you. Uh, it does have other aspects to it. It will record the audio uh, and that's very important, but it doesn't, it doesn't start you out with the audio. Uh, if, if, every, if you've ever opened up PowerPoint before, you all know what this process is. You open it up, it asks you to pick a, a, a theme. And so you choose some colors and a background and some fonts, and then it throws you into slide one. And suddenly you're looking at slide one and the program is yelling, feed me. And you haven't ever thought about what you're doing yet. And you sort of feel like you have to start filling in slides. And if you create your presentation that way, you're doing it backwards because you need to be figuring out all these other aspects of what your presentation is going to be before you ever start making the slides. The purpose of slides in a presentation 
is to support what you have to say. So you as the presenter have to figure out what you have to say and you have to put all of that together and you actually have to you know, lock it in before you ever start making slides because the slides should only ever support what you have to say, not tell the whole story. And so uh, we need to figure out a number of things. We're gonna learn that process. And that's what she's written, Nan that's what Nancy Duarte has written about in these first chapters, chapters one through four and seven, we want you to read this week. And that's gonna tell you why she thinks presentations are, are unique and powerful. They really are, they really have taken over the way all businesses run nowadays. If you think about a major corporation, you know, 50 years ago when they had a problem, you know, the president would call in the vice president and say, hey, uh, we need to figure out what to do about X, Y, and Z. And the, the, uh, the vice president would take it on as a project and study it for six months and write a white paper. And the white paper would get filed and then, you know, they'd feel like they'd solved the problem because they're moving slow. That's the way industry moved back then. Nowadays, life moves at a much faster pace and every, change, every decision that needs to be made needs to be made on a deadline in a very fast way. So we've discovered that presentations are a way to clarify what we're thinking and get us into a framework for making decisions. So that means that presentations necessarily need to be short and to the point. You do not pad a presentation. You do not make it longer to make yourself seem important. You get to the heart of the matter and you explain things and the shorter the presentation is, the better it is. That's sometimes counterintuitive to a student. I know you feel like when you get a writing assignment, you know, it gets weighed by the pound and the more you write, the better your grade is. But the whole thing about presentations is it is meant to be clarifying thought. So if your thoughts are muddy, you, you know, feel free to go on for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes because you're never going to have a solution. But if you're clear about what an answer is, then you should be able to say that in a very few words and you should be able to, to outline it for folks in such a way that you can set up a meeting. You know, typically the way we use presentations nowadays is that you'll, uh, within a company, you'll, you'll um, schedule a, a conference room and there might be eight or 10 people who are relevant to making decision on a particular topic invited to the meeting. And the person running the meeting is gonna run PowerPoint for the first five, 10 minutes of the meeting, no longer. You know, if the meeting is an hour long, the presentation should never be longer than 10 minutes long. Uh, and all the presentation is gonna do is set up the issues. Tell us, this is what the problem is. These are what the issues need to be discussed. Here, here are things that we can go about it. And then the presentation ends and you've set up everyone in that room for having a creative, and fruitful discussion. That's the point of a presentation. It clarifies thought, it spreads ideas. And if you can't do that in a short, powerful way, you're never gonna do it in a longer thudding, prodding way. So presentations are meant to be short and to the point. And we all sit through presentations and they're boring and they seem like they go on forever. We feel like we're trapped, you know, and uh, it isn't just that they're ugly, that we're just looking at words people have thrown up on the screen. It's that they're just a series of facts and they don't connect and we can't remember what slide one was about by the time we're at slide five. Uh, it should never be that way. Facts alone don't make for an engaging presentation. You can't just throw facts or uh, uh, isolated items into slides and expect to go from point to point and have it make sense. The only way people can understand things if you tell them a story. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. And so you have to figure out what it is that you have to say to your group and you have to figure out how to turn it into a story. Turning something into a story isn't that big a deal. It, it creates, it means putting it into a beginning, middle, and end. But storytelling is much more effective than simply reporting. People remember it more. And we've studied this. We've studied it in you know, uh, modern people. We've looked at it through the ages. 
Storytelling is something that humans have been doing for 100,000 years. And uh, when they were doing it 100,000 years ago, they weren't standing up to be getting a grade. They were standing up to survive. Our little survival as a species depended on being able to pass on the information that needed to be passed on. So uh, people would gather around a campfire and give out critical information about what needed to be done. And that information couldn't be boring. People had to remember it. If we told you once, uh, then you're on your own. And if you forget it, it may be your life. So people stood around the campfire and they told stories. And the stories are about things that they needed to know and needed to remember. Oh, and, there. and they told them in exciting and powerful ways so people understood and remember. Your brain is wired to understand a story in a way that it isn't going to understand isolated facts. We've studied this, and if you just give people random information, if you give them the resume of your life rather than story of your life, facts are gonna stick in at different points, but you ask people to remember them back and they won't because the different points of your brain that they're stored in don't necessarily connect. But when you add a story, when you add multimedia, when you add drama to the telling of those facts, then there are other places where that, those, that information is stored and people can recall it. So storytelling is the key to making something memorable. And again, all you need to tell a story is the beginning, middle, and end. Whatever it is that you have to say, you can put into that framework. The beginning is laying out the, uh, the framework of what exists right now. The middle are the complications, the things that are going to come down the pike or that have to be changed or that have to be fixed at this moment. And the end is the takeaway. Where do we go from here? There are possible solutions. There's a single solution. There's a solution, but it hurts. Whatever it is we're gonna talk about, that's how you're going to clarify people's thinking. Talk about the issue, put it in a, a framework where there's a beginning, middle, and end. This isn't necessarily you know, fiction type stories. Anything you have to say, you can put into this kind of story framework and people are gonna remember it more than isolated facts. So um, the other thing we want to talk about today is Nancy Duarte's vision of what the, what the slides are really for. The slides are there to support what you have to say. Uh, in order to make drama and have multimedia, if you're telling people what they need to know, then you're also needing to support that with information that's going to make it uh, interesting, vital, into multimedia. And that's where your slides come in. That's where you have the ability to amplify your words, to really uh, put drama in, into someone's mind for the combination of the story that you're telling and the slides that they're seeing. Now, slides can be text only. They can be picture only. Those are fine ways to use slides in context. But what Nancy uh, Duarte is pushing at us is a combination of text and image, of quote and image, in which the words have meaning, but the meaning of those words are intensified or specified by the image you put with it. Let me give you an example. Here's a quote all by itself. Education is the kindling of a flame not the, not the filling of a vessel by Socrates. Now, you may or may not have heard of Socrates. He's a famous Greek philosopher, lived 3,000 years ago. So if you know who Socrates is, then you know this is an old quote, then you might think, well, okay, this is some kind of uh, pithy wisdom that gets handed down the ages. But in terms of figuring out what to think about this quote, I haven't given you any help. It's just black text on a white background. It is nothing but text. But if I start to combine this quote with an image, that will help you interpret what you should think about about this quote. Because even though it's a 3,000 year old quote, education is something that is important to us right now. I mean, we've just spent the entire summer wondering how we're going to do education in the midst of a coronavirus 
pandemic? You know, can people even be in the same room? Uh, how are we going to do this? Are we going to do it all by video camera and Zoom? And these are issues of the day. So education doesn't get to be much more current event. So if I want you to feel like this is a quote about some urgency of the day, I might combine this quote with an image of third world kids under an underpass teaching themselves. You're gonna get a sense of modern events. You're gonna get a sense of currency, of modern day and the urgency of education. The combination of this photograph and this quote is colored in such a way that you're, you're, you're adding meaning to it in a way that I intend because you're interpreting the photo to color the quote. Now, what if I did want to think about education as a, uh, some kind of lofty thing through the ages? What if I did want you to focus on the fact that this is from Socrates and it's 3,000 years old? Well, I might combine the quote with a Renaissance painting of Socrates. And now you are thinking of this in a much more lofty fashion. This isn't current events anymore. This is education through the ages. This is, this is wisdom through the years. So the combination of the image and the quote colors the way that you think. And that's the creative act that I, as the presenter, have to figure out. This is the job that you're going to take on. Not only are you going to figure out what you want to say to your audience, you're going to color the way that they interpret what you have to say by picking just the right image to go with it. Now, part of what I need to know is who my audience is and how am I going to relate to them. So I have to know whether you're up for this. And I happen to think that, well, this particular crowd probably isn't digging 3,000 year old Greek philosophers. You're just probably not up on Socrates all that much. This is, this is a modern pop culture audience. What is a pop culture reference that I can make here that can hook you in? Well, what is there about Socrates that might be modern pop culture? Well, uh, he is the character Socrates in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is a comedy from the 90s that just came back last month with a sequel. So if I use a movie clip from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure with Keanu Reeves, then I'm making a pop culture reference. And I'm making that because I know that you, as an audience, are into movies and modern fun stuff, not old Greek stuff. So it has to do with my understanding of you as an audience. This kind of reference of, oh, we get each other. We know who we are, this sort of sly wink. This is important. And it can only happen if you know who your audience is. So picking the right image to color the quote means that you're understanding who your audience is. And uh, that is a creative act that you guys are gonna be engaged in. So that's what makes figuring out presentations a lot of fun, that the, the planning of them is so much more important than the presenting of them, that you're going to do in, in the advance, before you get to PowerPoint, all the thinking, all the figuring out. And that is the issues that we're going to learn with Nancy Duarte. Now, if we're talking about storytelling, if we're talking about using uh, presentations to reach the audience, then we're getting into a lot of Joseph Campbell journey of the storyteller kind of stuff. And I think most of you have heard that kind of thing. If I'm telling you that you're telling a story, then you're probably thinking that you as the orator are the hero that people are going to focus in on. But it doesn't really work that way. You're telling a story to an audience and the audience has to imagine that story for this to be working. You're only successful as a presenter if your audience is swept up in the story that you're telling. So the first thing you have to realize is that the audience is the hero. That the story that you're telling, no matter what it's about, no matter who it's about, if the audience isn't imagining it happening to them, if they aren't running a movie in the back of their mind as they're listening to you and watching your slides, then you aren't being successful. So the audience is the hero of the story in storytelling lore. And there's a name 
for the person that engages the hero on his journey. That's what you're doing. By speaking this uh, presentation out and taking them through all the slides, you're initiating them on this journey. You're making them imagine that it's happening to them. And the person that initiates the hero on his journey is called the mentor. So that's your job as a presenter. You have to engage the audience and make sure that they get started on this adventure, that all of them in their head are thinking about what you're telling them. And you wanna choose the right language. You wanna use action verbs that make them uh, step forward and so forth. So that's what meeting the mentor is about. You are the mentor. You are the person that's gonna take this audience on its journey. And it's your job to make sure that that works. You're doing it with the language that you use in telling your story. You're doing it with the voice that you use to tell that story. You're doing it with the slides that you have. Um, so ultimately, giving a creative presentation is an act of storytelling. Taking people on that journey is an act of storytelling. And that's what we want to get you all involved in doing and figuring out how to make it work. And once you've created those experiences for your audience, then you're going to understand what it means to be successful in communicating your ideas and making them go forward and viral. So uh, that's what the reading is about. That's what we want to catch you up on. Nancy Duarte is introducing you to her theories of what makes good presentations. What are we going to do as actual uh, assignments this week? Well, there are two main assignments. There's a discussion that a lot of you have already gotten started with, and I'm going to dump out of the slides right now and get started on that. So uh, I want to talk about the discussion assignment, and then I'll talk about the main assignment for the week. So here is in 1.2 where uh, you, you see the books. This link here, right above the chapters, is the link that should take you to resonate. And if it doesn't, then contact me or contact tech support because we need to fix, make sure your credentials work. However, if you're having issues or you actually get on to uh, resonate and uh, start looking at the books and you're not really that happy with the experience, uh, this is a web-based experience. So those of you that are on your phones are gonna discover that this is kind of a, a, a wide formatted um, website and maybe the reading is not so great. Uh, this is not going to completely correct the problem, but we do have a copy of the book that you can download as a PDF, and then you can look at that offline on your, on your phone. So it will uh, save you some time and uh, uh, some headache if you're having any problems with the uh, O'Reilly website. Now, 1.3 is the discussion board, and uh, the instructions are on the page here. Basically, we want you to tell us what your previous history was with presentations, what your ideas are, what, you, what experience you've had. Was it successful? Was it unsuccessful? Are you afraid to speak in public? Are you interested in software? There's a number of prompts here. And we don't ask you to answer everything. We're not asking you to be comprehensive here. I want you just to pick one of these things and explain it in detail. So we're looking for what we're calling an initial post from everybody, which is that you come in and you explain yourself and um, you can type here at the bottom of this page to do an initial post. But if you want to see what other people are doing, you can go on straight to the discussion without actually having done your own post. And you can see, uh, you know, we start off with a, a, a post that I've written here, uh, but you can see other classmates have already started to write in. So you have to create an initial post. You create an initial post by, uh, if you're already on the discussion board, by posting at the top. When you write here and hit post, then that is going to attach your name and your uh, um, picture icon to that post. Now, we also have an, a requirement that you reply to two or more students. So after you've made your own initial post, I want you to come back and you want you to read what other students have written. And if you hit the reply button underneath what other students have written, then you are replying to other students. 
So you have an obligation this week by Sunday uh, to write one initial post and reply to two or more students. Now we want you to apply to more than two, but two is the minimum. Uh, and you have until Wednesday, you can see here in the instructions here, uh, Wednesday, we are asking you to get your initial post up. So that very first post from you should be done today, tomorrow, or Wednesday night, anytime during the day. Now, if it, if you, if it gets to be Thursday and you haven't posted it, that's fine. Just go ahead and do it. It's not like you're going to turn into a pumpkin or anything. But we want you all to get your initial posts up so that other people can have a chance to respond to them. And uh, once you've posted your initial post, then we want you to come back and we want you to read what your classmates have written. And we want you to respond to as many people as you can. And we want you to respond in a meaningful way. So you'll notice that in the descriptions, the, the, the instructions here, we talk a little bit about something called the RISE method. It's a way of making response posts that are more than just trivial uh, small talk. I mean, it's easy to say good post at a boy. You could do that, you could, you could post reply to everyone. But what we want is for you to take a few posts that engage you and ask people questions. Take it a little bit further. Offer your own suggestions. Talk about your own experiences. Um, give people a little bit more information in the reply than just good post. Uh, we want to be nice to each other, but we also want to engage in a little bit of uh, uh, meaningful discussion here. So um, your initial post should talk about how, what your feelings are about presentations. If you're trepidatious, you could talk about that. If you're interested in a particular software, you could talk about that. If you're interested in using slides in a particular way, uh, if you have questions about, uh, you know, whether or not you could use um, video editing software instead of uh, presentation software, you can ask that. By the way, the answer is yes. Um, so you can discuss anything you want. There are a number of prompts here to help you, guide you. You don't have to answer them all, but they're there to just help you give you topics to talk about. So you can also figure out what you want to talk about by reading what your classmates have written. So anyway, that's that assignment. It's not that complicated. Initial post by Wednesday, reply post by Sunday. Make sure you have at least two uh, replies. More than two replies is uh, desired. So the main assignment this week is called professional presentation analysis. So this is a class where we learn by doing, but the first week we're not going to make a presentation. This is an assignment that is not a presentation. Let me say that again because people just constantly give me PowerPoints on this. This is an assignment that is not a presentation. This is an assignment where I want you to watch other presentations and talk to me about them. So here's the plan for the entire month. It's four weeks. This week, we're going to look at a lot of presentations and get a, a kind of vocabulary in our mind of what, what the range of presentations can be. What, what can you do with them? And, uh, actually have a, a, a notion of, of different types of presentations. That's why I'm going to send you to a place where you can see a lot of really great ones. And you can, you can have some kind of sense of, of, of what the range is. And we're reading the Nancy Duarte uh, chapters, and that's going to give us her notion of what presentations should and shouldn't be. So we're getting a basis for talking about them. We're gaining a vocabulary this week. So next week, we're going to start working on your own presentation that you're going to build throughout the rest of the month. And next week, you won't build that presentation either. You're going to plan that presentation. So before we actually make the, the presentation, we're going to write out all the things that we're thinking about in pre-production. We're going to learn about planning and you're going to make a plan. And then in week three, you're going to take the elements of that plan and you're going to turn it into a presentation. You're going to make a completed presentation, a three to four minute presentation with voiceover audio. Everybody has to speak. Everybody has to have voiceover audio. This is, a, this is an online class. You're not doing this live. You don't, have to, you don't have to talk in front of anyone, but you have to record your voice 
you have to embed it in a presentation pro, uh, program, and you have to add slides to it. You have to add visuals and audio. All right. So uh, week three, you're going to make a complete presentation, turn it in, uh, and, and you're going to receive feedback on it. And week four, you're going to revise that presentation. You're not going to do another presentation. You're going to revise the presentation you made in week three. You're going to make it better. You're going to improve it to some degree based on the feedback that you receive from myself and your classmates. So that's the plan for the entire month. The plan this week is that we're going to look at a lot of presentations and we're going to get a sense of what can be done. We're going to do that by going to TED Talks. I don't know, most of you have already heard of TED Talks. You should already know what it is. But if you haven't ever heard of it, TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. This is a company that puts on presentations all over the world. And instead of having one speaker who speaks for an hour and a half, they have 20 speakers over the course of two or three days. And each presentation is short and to the point. Like I said earlier, the shorter a presentation is, the more powerful it is. So every single TED Talk is between six and 20 minutes long. They're not very long. It's a little bit like popcorn. And they've been doing it for over a dozen years now. So they have over 3,500 recordings of presentations that have been done all over the world on every subject imaginable. So we want you to go to the TED Talk website and jump around, watch as many as you can. This is a great chance to get lost down the rabbit hole. Uh, you have a requirement to, to write about three presentations, uh, three TED Talks. Don't be a nudge and just watch three. Make sure you watch a dozen before you pick the three that you want to use. Uh, you know, just set aside six or seven hours this week so you can just watch TED Talk after TED Talk after TED Talk. The only thing that can happen is it'll make you smarter. And try to go as wide and range as possible. I know if you're an audio guy, you can certainly find audio production themed TED Talks. And if you're a video guy, you can find video game themed TED Talks. And you know, maybe you want to do a little bit of that, but don't, don't stay there. Don't stay in your garden. Use this opportunity to just find uh, the, the, the weirdest, craziest new information you can get. So watch as many TED Talks as you can. And then back to the instructions. After you've watched and show, after you watched a bunch of TED Talks, choose three of them. You're going to take three presentations and you're going to write reviews of them. You're going to write text reviews of the three TED Talks that you picked. Now, you're not reviewing the TED Talk itself. You're not telling me this is about such and such. You're going to review the presenter. That's the whole point here. We want you to watch these TED Talks and we want you to watch what the presenter did or didn't do right. Now, how are you going to know what they did or didn't do right? Well, you will have finished the reading. So I highly recommend that you get all of the reading from Nancy Duarte completed before you start this assignment. If you start on the reading now and you get it done by uh, Wednesday or Thursday, then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you can work on this project and you will have the knowledge of what Nancy Duarte says is a good thing to do or a bad thing to do. Uh, and you'll be able to judge how well these presenters did their work. So we want you to write two or three paragraph reviews of each of these different TED Talks. So three TED Talks, you're going to write two or three paragraph reviews of each one of them. And you want to identify the, the presenter. You want to identify the TED Talk. You want to talk about what they did right. You might need to tell me a little bit about the topic, but you don't need to discuss the topic in, in, in any great detail. But you're basically telling me how well the presenter did his or her job. If you find somebody did a poor job, that's even better. Just explain how. Just explain what they did wrong. If you think they did a great job, then tell me that as well. But the basis of your comparison is going to be uh, what you read from Nancy Duarte. So make sure you get the reading done ahead of time. Now, you're not only going to uh, write about each TED Talk, but you're going to illustrate it as well. I want you to find some images to go in your presentation to explain the piece to me. 
So you're choosing images to communicate. And I'm going to judge your images on whether or not they help to communicate. Uh, uh, you can have as many or as few images as you like. But whatever you choose, make sure that they help me understand what you've written better. That's the point of adding images to your uh, uh, present to your talk, uh, to your write up. And the final aspect is, after you've done the three different presentations, I want you to compare them together. And you're going to make one list of 10 qualities that the presentation shared. Now, this is going to come straight out of the Nancy Duarte reading. If you finish the reading, you're going to know immediately how to do this. So you're going to do all of this. And this is a written assignment. So I suggest that you use Microsoft Word or Google Docs or uh, uh, Apple Pages. Um, any writing program that you want to use, you're up for it. And you, yes, you can use PowerPoint, but I don't like to use PowerPoint as a writing tool. I, I used to like PowerPoint simply to make presentations. So I would prefer that you use Word. And note that all of you are receiving brand new copies of Word as part of being students here. Uh, the student email that you're going to be using, uh, they want you to access using Outlook. So the school has already pointed you to getting a copy of Office 365. Now, this is a deal that Microsoft puts out. This isn't necessarily full sales deal for you. But uh, one thing that Microsoft does for all students is if you have a legitimate student e uh, email, a .edu account, they will give you a four years uh, license to the latest version of Office 365. So as long as you're using your fullsale.edu account, you'll get access to the latest version of Office 365 from, from Microsoft. And that includes online storage. So you're going to get um, a, a terabyte of, of storage online so you can keep your files online. There are online versions of the software. And there are desktop versions of the software that you can put on your choice of tools. So that means that you get the latest, greatest Microsoft Office tools. That includes Microsoft Word, includes Outlook, it includes PowerPoint, it includes uh, Outlook, uh, Excel. Uh, there's no reason to use Excel, but you're going to have it. And you can put it on anything you like. You can put it on Windows, Mac, Android, or iOS for, or iPhone. So there are versions of Office 365 for a phone or for a laptop. And another cool thing about the license that full sale that uh, Microsoft's giving you is that you're allowed to have it on two devices at the same time. So if you're using a laptop right now and you're waiting to get your launch box kit in three or four months, you can go ahead and put Microsoft Office on the new lap on the laptop you have right now. And then when you get a launch box three or four months later, you can put another version on that as well. So Microsoft will allow you to uh, manage that. And the other cool thing is that since most schools are four-year schools, they're giving you a four-year license to Office 365 for free. And because you're going to graduate from full sale faster than that, then when you graduate from full sale, you'll actually have a year and a half license of Microsoft Office for free, uh, you know, just because of graduating early. So it's a good deal. You don't have to use Microsoft Office, but we recommend it. And it's a great to be on the latest tools. So if you use Microsoft Office uh, to create your, your reviews, you can turn them in. Uh, you, you upload your homework by putting it on this completion panel. Here, I'm on this page. This is, this is the 1.4 page. He's giving you the instructions to go through. And once you're done with the file, if you're working on a laptop and you have a file, if you have a, a Word doc or PDF, it's really good to save out as a PDF as well. You can drop, you can drag and drop that onto this panel and that will upload it to the system. That's how you turn in your homework at the end of the week. Now, if you're on a phone, you don't really have a file on your phone. You're actually using cloud storage. So rather than uh, use this drag and drop completion, come down to the feedback box and give me a link to the file. And that will be as good as turning in your homework if you're on a phone. 
Now, the, uh, I, I have a whole lot of previous student examples of uh, these reviews that I want to show you. Uh, so these are things that students have written. You can notice that in their uh, um, list of 10 files, it's not just the single you know, uh, word. They actually explain themselves. But uh, these students have embedded pictures. And the pictures help me to understand what they're writing. But you can see that they've written one or two paragraphs on each topic. And then they give me a list of the 10 um, qualities that they all share at the end. So uh, I'm happy to share these examples with anybody. Uh, just write me a, a letter and I will send you a, a cop or send me a note, uh, a feedback, and I'll send you uh, copies of um, previous student files. If I share a student's um, presentation with you, you could you cannot use those TED Talks. So whatever three TED Talks I give you, you have to choose something else. As there are 3,500 of them, uh, I should not be a uh, uh, much of a, a harm. Uh, so that's what I've got today. Do we have any questions here? I know I've got there a lot of material. But, uh, and I didn't necessarily notice that there were any questions in the chat box. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, either uh, request to speak or, um, or ask a question in the chat box. I have a quick question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so is every one of these Zooms gonna be running at 6 p.m. or could it run throughout any time of the day? Uh, I picked them to run at 6 p.m. Is this inconvenient for you? No, no, this is perfect for me. I was just wondering. Uh, I picked them arbitrarily. Um, I usually pick late afternoon because I have both East Coast and West Coast to think to worry about. If I have them too early in the day, then it's very early for the West Coast folks. Uh, and, uh, you know, having them at 5 or 6 o'clock uh, just means late afternoon for the, the West Coast folks. But, um, Having picked these times, uh, they're, they're set for the month. And uh, they're just going to be every Monday. And um, uh, if you can't make it, then the video is available. OK, thank you. Anybody else have a question? I actually do have a quick question. Yes. Um, for the, uh, the TED Talks, um, like specifically, you kind of want, um, I don't know, kind of, I don't know why, why I can't speak now, <laughs> but um, like you want us to discuss like each of the TED Talks, the three TED Talks that we watched, like what they did right according to uh, the chapters in the book we're supposed to be reading? Yes. Basically, you know, if they, if they made eye contact, if they used hands, if they told jokes, if they used props, you know, whatever the techniques they used were that you think were successful, and if they come out of Nancy Duarte's talking, then you want to put that in there. And, and you don't have to be always praising them. If you think they did something wrong or they do, you know, they told jokes that were corny, you can say that. Uh, and you can talk a little bit about their subject matter, but what I don't want is just a review of, of what the talk was about. I, uh, I'm really am more, more interested in how you feel like the presenter did his or her job. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a good question. Anybody else? All right. So uh, this recording is going to probably get posted in about an hour, hour and a half, uh, and it'll be available for the rest of the week. So if you guys want to come back and double check anything, uh, there's no problem with that. So any more questions before I let you guys go? Well, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Full Sail, and I hope you guys have a great week. Good night, everybody. All right, who's hopping on?